So, moving from the UK over to Canada for grad school would have been pretty damn cool. However, sometimes things happen in life and life takes other directions. So today I'm telling you guys why I wanted to come to this beautiful place, Vancouver, for grad school. Hi everyone, I'm Georgia and I'm a genomic data scientist living and working in Cambridge in the UK. This summer I'm out here in the beautiful city, Vancouver, working remotely. I share on this channel all about how you can go from a wet lab biology degree teach yourself how to code and land a job in genomic data science. I'm here in Vancouver on the beautiful UBC campus and in today's video we're going to be talking all about why it was that I wanted to come here for grad school to study medical genetics. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. So like I said in the intro, I'm here on the UBC University, the, uh, University of British Columbia campus in the beautiful Vancouver in Canada. And a lot of people have been asking me, why on earth am I working remotely here for the summer? So in this video, I'm here to tell you why I'm here and why I originally was gonna move over to Vancouver all the way from the UK. So first things first, Yep, so why am I here? So I flew over here on a one-way ticket that I booked because I'd got accepted into the graduate school program here in UBC to study medical genetics. So it would have been a genetics, but still computational kind of graduate program here. And I applied for the program two years ago and I got accepted. I won a scholarship and I have been deferring my place ever since. Unfortunately, well I say unfortunately, life happens, everything happens for a reason, but unfortunately things happened back in the UK in my personal life which meant that I couldn't move to Canada. However, I still had this one way ticket booked. I had an Airbnb booked for five weeks when I was gonna be moving out here. So luckily, because I can do my job from anywhere with an internet connection, I was then able to still fly out here and still be able to work for my company back in the UK, which is super, super cool. So like I said, I had been accepted into UBC, I was in the medical genetics program, and um, I spent two years here communicating with the professors I was going to be working with, and um, I even flown out here last year to meet everybody, so I was fully invested in making the move here, and sometimes you make plans and these things don't happen, and that's okay, and it just makes you more grateful for the other things that you have in your life, so I'm not coming out here anymore, but I think there are a lot of lessons, well there are a lot of things I learned along the way in applying for the program here, in spending two years kind of working in my job and deferring my place at grad school, but I think it's really valuable to share on this channel because a lot of the content I make here, right, is about you don't need a graduate degree and yet hold on, this girl was going to come to graduate school in Vancouver, so I'm going to share with you today on this first Can Canada, <laughs> this first Canadian edition on genomics with Georgia, why it was that I applied to and really wanted to come to this graduate program. So, reasons why I applied here. So I think the first reason I I applied, well let, let's let's be honest, transparency. Okay, so my my ex-boyfriend was moving to Canada, so suddenly I started looking, can I go to Canada too? Um, and back then when I was doing my undergraduate degree, like we say all the time, the only path in science that you're kind of told about is undergraduate degree, postgraduate degree, postdoc, professor, academic path, or at least, you know, if you want to be a scientist, you have to have a postgraduate education. So that was my immediate thought, right? I finished my undergrad, what do I do now? Well, I have to go and get a master's or a PhD. And I've spoken about in previous videos why getting a master's in the UK can be quite elitist because there isn't funding for taught masters and research masters programs in the way that there is for undergraduate degrees. So it's a little bit harder if you don't have the finances. So I wanted to come out here because I thought that's how I progress my scientific career. At the time when I was doing my undergraduate degree, my network was super small, right? Like it was just, it was the scientists that I'd met in my small research team that I was working in at the Earlham Institute. And that was kind of my circle, right? I didn't have a network. So I thought if I can find a way to you know, have a graduate education out here in Canada. I'm just going to grow my network in a way that would, just, would have just blown my mind. So yeah, it was the only path I thought was like doing grad school was the only path I thought would progress my career. Um, I wanted to follow somebody at the time um, and I just wanted to gain the coding skills, right? So if I was doing a graduate program, 
and kind of computational genetics, then I'm going to be surrounded by people who have the programming abilities and who I can, you know, leech off and learn off of. So they were the kind of main reasons of wanting to come here. A taught masters in the UK wasn't an option for me. I didn't really want to jump straight into a PhD in the UK. And to be honest with you, I wasn't ready for that either. So coming here made a lot of sense because even though the programs are longer, you can kind of dip out after two and a half years with a masters or you can continue the PhD. So there were just a load of things that really appealed to me about coming here. And then and then another reason why I wanted to come here was I'd only done this small research project at the Ellen Institute and I'd done the internship, but I didn't have a broad idea of where I could apply my knowledge. But by this point, I was kind of understanding that at the time, you know, I really wanted to be doing human genetics. It was the thing that really interested me. Coming out here in the medical genetics department was going to allow me to combine my my initial kind of genetic counselling um, interests with learning the bioinformatics that comes with doing a postgraduate degree in medical genetics. Yeah, they were the reasons why I chose to come out here. And then in terms of Canada, so I always knew that I wanted to study abroad, work abroad at some point in my life. And Canada just really appealed to me. So Australia was, I looked at Australia a lot. Um, it was just, it's just so far from home. And then I looked at America, but it's very difficult to apply for like certain funding and scholarships. This is my next thing that I really want to share on this channel because I didn't know this. My advisors at university didn't know this and I only found out by going through this application process. So one of the really important things that I want to share is, so if you want to study in Canada as an international student doing a master's in that's like life sciences research, so they don't do this in the UK. So even as an international student, you are guaranteed a stipend doing a master's if you get into the program and have a supervisor. So I always thought, you know, international study is for really rich people who have loads of money and like families behind them sending them money all the time. So I never thought that it was something I could do, but it turns out, yeah. So the way that things work in Canada, um, well, especially the programs I applied to, which I'll say in a sec, you can study here doing a master's and they pay you a stipend. So stipend is an untaxed sum of money, uh, kind of like student loans. Like it's untaxed, it just comes in your bank account, uh, like a PhD salary, well, PhD stipend. <laughs> um, even as an international student, you can study here for a master's if it's in research life sciences and they'll pay you to do that and it doesn't matter about your like your home status so that kind of blew my mind because back home masters was out of the question because i didn't have the finances but then you can come abroad and they'll pay you to do it in canada so yeah really important lesson to learn you can come and get paid here to study i applied to UBC um, in the medical genetics department and then I also applied and got into the University of Toronto in the molecular genetics department and both both like of the top two universities in Canada had the same process so they will give you a stipend and pay for your living costs and tuition fees so that was like really incredible to learn because I had no idea they did that and how it works out here in Canada so they give you like a guaranteed minimum stipend so whatever happens you have a minimum amount of money but then whilst you're out here or even before that you even before you come here you can apply for extra scholarships to kind of give you more money to live on and these are things like they're quite competitive obviously so if you've done like we talk about on this channel before if you like bulked out your cv doing all sorts of extra courses and you know chucking in all those soft skills that you're learning doing other sorts of things you can apply to these scholarships and they just give you a bump up on your like living money that you're getting from studying here really awesome guaranteed minimum stipend you can apply for extra scholarships you can also then be like an RA, a research assistant, a teaching assistant. Um, you're also allowed to, this is another thing actually. So in America, a lot of the time, if you're doing graduate school, you're banned from getting like a job outside of your PhD. Whereas here in Canada, you can work unlimited hours on campus or there's like a cap, but yeah, you can work. Like, I think it's like something up to 20 hours a week off campus. It's a financially viable option for UK students to come to Canada to study life sciences as a like postgraduate. So yeah, I just, I thought it was really important to share that on this channel because I had no idea that that was the situation and I don't think anybody else would either because why would you have looked into 
studying in Canada. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. So application process. So I'll talk you through the application process of my program that I got into. So I applied for programs where you had to be accepted both into the school and then get a supervisor to sponsor your application. So that was the kind of only difference as an international student. A lot of the universities specify that you have to get a supervisor on board, whereas sometimes home students can just come into a program and then you get given well, you can then like find a supervisor once you're here. Whereas as an international, you need somebody to kind of vouch for you. So I'm going to make a ton more videos about like how to cold email people, how to reach out to people, what's the best way to kind of do your research before having those first discussions and how to have those first discussions. Because I think spending so much time in hospitality means that I'm quite good at like communication. So yeah, I really want to, I'll share some more stuff about that whilst I'm out here. But yeah, so essentially that was the application process. Apply to the school, find a supervisor and then I didn't have any interviews. Oh, actually, no, that's a lie. I had I had like a technical interview for the molecular genetics at the University of Toronto because it was like more computational. So they wanted to check that I knew like basic stats and coding stuff. But in terms of UBC, there was no interview. I just had to like informally interview to meet the supervisor that would sponsor me. I found that whole process quite easy. If you follow like certain lines of communication then it can be quite easy to find like the right fit yeah again i'll talk about that in another video that was the application process and then once you're in um you're in <laughs> um so yeah i've been in for a while um sad times um but yeah you, the maximum amount of time you could defer your place here is two years so i deferred it for the two years and then we're now <laughs> we're now the summer i should have come <laughs> but um it's okay i'll uh, get over it what next and then just to wrap up this video of why i wanted to come to canada i was desperate to come here like georgia two years ago was desperate everyone else in my life was like making their own next steps and next moves and i hadn't found my like my calling yet but the thing is when i first you know was speaking to the labs out here in canada they said you know see if you can go and grab you know um like a research assistant job uh, for a little bit and um you know then like you know come and join us later and i i ended up getting my genomic data science job that i love so much so it was a really weird situation where two years ago this this move made sense to me and it was the only way like i said at the beginning of the video that i was gonna grow my network i was gonna build the skills that i need i was gonna you know, get my domain expertise i was gonna just grow as a scientist right this was my platform to do that and i've said before you know if you don't have a platform to do that masters and postgraduate education is a it's a great way to do it but I look at you know where I am now and having spent two years working as a genomic data scientist me now coming to start learning those skills in a graduate program doesn't actually make much sense <laughs> um, because I've, I've already learned those skills and you know granted I, I could have grown my network here and I kind of have I mean actually I've started to grow a network here anyway which is super cool just through you know meeting people when I want to come to visit here and just you know communications and social medias I think it's important to recognize that a year or two years is a lot of time and things can really change whether that's professionally or in your personal life it's really important to have a flexible mindset when it comes to thinking about your career and your goals because the things that you might might want now could be very very different to the things you might want in a year or two years time one thing I've learned is don't hold on to kind of past hopes and dreams if they don't align with who you are now and the vision that you have for yourself now it's okay to change your mind it's okay to broaden your horizons and every day that we go about this life we understand more about who we are who we want to become this is sounding so like philosophical sorry <laughs> but yeah I think it, yeah, flexible mindset is key and it's okay for your plans to change. That's what I want to say. So thank you for joining me on a, another video of Genomics with Georgia, Vancouver edition. If you've liked this content, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and I can't wait to see you again on another instalment of Genomics in Vancouver with Georgia. Peace out.